Hey, this is Leo for Actualized.org, and in this video, I'm going to talk about self-confidence. Okay, self-confidence. Let's talk a little bit about what this is and how it really works the in-depth mechanics of how confidence is developed. I actually have other videos that I'm gonna link down below in the comments section that talk about how to more practically build confidence. Here, I really want to get into, not so much giving you a little technique, but I want to, to really get into like the core of what confidence is, why some people have it, why some people don't. So this is gonna be a fascinating topic and it'll help you understand maybe where your own lack of self-confidence is coming from and how you can start to turn it around, not just with a little simple patch over solution, but really understanding it at its core. I find that's the best way to solve problems is understanding them at the core. So that's what I wanna cover here. Self-confidence, I mean, I've had my own self-confidence issues for a long, long time. I've had them since I was a kid, since I was six or seven years old. And uh, there are various areas in your life where confidence can be a problem. So we're gonna look at some of the different areas and we're gonna maybe see what is the area that you are having the most problem with confidence in. Because just say generally like lack of confidence, I have lack of confidence. That's a painting with too broad of a brush. What you want to do is you want to say, I have a lack of confidence in a particular area. Confidence is something that we're going to talk about is very context dependent. So we're going to take a look at that and other things along those lines. So what are some examples of where confidence could be lacking or where confidence could be required? An example might be a job interview. Maybe you have a job interview that you're going to and you're feeling worried about it. You're feeling stressed. You're not feeling confident. How about public speaking or speaking in front of others or being in a social situation? You're maybe an extrovert, or I mean an introvert, or you're just shy and you have lack of confidence in social situations or you have confidence problems when you need to go up and give a presentation at work. How about starting a business? Wow, it takes a lot of confidence to be able to start a business. How about starting a new hobby or some sort of endeavor that you're trying to master. Maybe you picked up a musical instrument that you're trying to master, maybe the guitar, the piano. Maybe you've got some other hobby like a sport, maybe golf or something like that that you're trying to get good at and you're struggling there because you don't have enough confidence. How about with the opposite sex, especially guys approaching girls? For me, uh, huge confidence issues there. I had to work really hard to work those out and I still have those. And a lot of guys generally don't have confidence when they're approaching a girl to talk to a girl to chat her up. So lack of confidence with women for men is a huge problem. How about lack of confidence with doing something in your life to improve yourself, such as losing weight or putting some other kind of positive habit into your life, like a gym routine or even confidence at the gym. Maybe you're at the gym and you're pushing yourself and you're not confident about an exercise that you're doing or the weight limit that you're trying to reach. So all of those are just like little, little areas uh, out of a big, big, big list that we could talk about for 15 or 20 minutes. So I don't wanna do that, I just wanna give you some ideas to start to get your mind connected with, with what we're really talking about. And I want you to get clear about where it is that you're specifically having your confidence issue. Because what I don't want you doing is using a broad brush to just kind of say that you have low confidence. That's not true. I'm sure we could find many areas in your life where you have fairly good confidence. So it's just the, the problem areas that we need to look at. Okay, what is confidence? What is it really? What is it like physically? What's this existential nature? Confidence is a vibration of energy. Confidence is a thought wave. That's what it is. It's a mind state. That's what confidence is. When you're going in to do something and you're calm and you're grounded and you feel like you have no problem accomplishing it, then what, what, what are you? You're confident, right? That's what's happening when you're going to brush your teeth in the morning. That's what's happening when you're driving your car. That's what's happening when you're going in to give some sort of presentation and you feel good about that. You don't have any worries about it. That's what's happening when you're cooking your dinner, if you're good at cooking dinner or anything else in life that you've quote unquote mastered, 
You're going to feel like you're able to do it. You're not going to worry too much. You're not going to second guess yourself. Well, what's the opposite of that? The opposite of that is when you're going into something, usually something new, something you don't have a lot of experience in, something that you have zero mastery in. So let's say you're going to swing a golf club for the first time. Or let's say you're going on your first date. Let's say you're having sex for the first time. Let's say you're going to uh, an important job interview for the first time. Let's say you have a big presentation in front of a hundred people in your company or in your division. And that's something that you've never done before. So all of those things, because they're new and fresh to you, you don't have a sense of confidence. And so what's happening is that in your mind, literally, it's a different vibration of energy. So a, a vibration of confidence is, is grounded. You know that you're going to be able to do it. A vibration of insecurity is all this worry and anxiety, negative thoughts, doom and gloom scenarios, negative visualizations that are going on. So it's important to recognize what confidence is, actually. It's a vibration. It's a thought. It's a mind state. Now, how is confidence developed? We already gave you some clues, but it should be pretty clear that nobody is born with confidence. Confidence is not something you're born with. And now, it might not seem that way on the surface, because you probably know people, or you know friends, or you know family members, or people that you work with, coworkers that have extraordinary levels of confidence and you envy them for that and you wonder to yourself, well, how can I get that? Is it possible for me to get that? And why is this person so goddamn confident? Like, why, what's the difference? I'm having such, such trouble in this area, but that person has it totally handled. Well, the difference is not that that person was born with it. He or she wasn't born with it. It's just that they have the experience that you're lacking, right? Right now, we could probably find some area in your life where you are very confident at something. Maybe you know how to paint. Maybe you know how to play a musical instrument. Maybe you know how to use the computer in a specific way. Maybe you know some applications there. Maybe you know a programming language. Whatever that is, you know something that you've mastered and you're really good at. And you can look and you can see that, peop that there are people in the world, in fact, probably millions of people who don't know that thing that you know. And so they're not confident about it at all. There are millions of people who are not confident about how to use a computer, or how to paint, or how to play a musical instrument, or whatever it else is that you're good at. So it's important to notice that in that area, actually you are the one who has self-confidence, and other people don't. So when you're feeling lack of confidence, it's simply you being on, on, the, on the opposite side of that equation, right? And so you see somebody who does have that confidence, you don't have it, why is that? That's because you lack the experience that's necessary. The other reason is not only do you lack the experience, but you might also have a lack of mental control over your, your mind state. So you might be an anxious, anxiety prone person. You might be a neurotic type of person. You might have a lot of pessimistic and negative thoughts coming up so that even when you're doing stuff that you do have experience with, you still have a lot of anxiety and you still have a lot of worry and lack of the confidence that's necessary. So there's really two, two parts to this. One is getting the requisite experience that you want. The other is getting your mind handled, which is a lot of the videos that I'm shooting and bringing to you with actualize.org is about how to do that. That's a really in-depth topic, so I'm not going to cover that all in this video. Let's take a look at an example, a couple of examples of people who are really, really confident. I tend to find that the reason that some people are kind of naturally perceived as being confident is because they got that initial experience that's necessary to have confidence, they got it really early in life. And that's probably true for you too, for those things that you're really confident about in your life. Is that you probably got those early on when you were a kid or a teenager, and now you perceive as those things just being a natural part of you. And that's what really confidence is, it's just like it's thinking like, well, you know what, that's just me. I'm just like a naturally good golfer, or I'm like a naturally good with math, or I'm naturally good at this instrument, or I'm naturally good at painting and drawing or whatever else, a naturally gifted speaker. If you think that way, then that like, even solidifies your confidence even more. You feel this vibration of like, mm, like, like strength within you, rather than the weakness. If you have to go and acquire those skills later in life, then your confidence level is not going to be quite as high as some of those naturals, the people that got it earlier in life. Not that you can never reach those levels, but it's going to take you longer, and it's going to require more work. So a really good example that I've seen is, uh, I've been studying a lot 
about the dating community and just how dating works. Like I've been studying the psychology and the dynamics of dating for the last few years, and one of the things that I really notice is confidence levels that are associated with good looks. So guys who are good looking tend to be extremely confident. And guys who are worse in their looks, they don't have that same confidence level. The same thing applies with women. Women who don't have good looks don't have high confidence. And women who have like really gorgeous looks, like really a stunner girl, she tends to have quite a lot of confidence, at least within that context. Not everywhere in life, but at least within that context, within dating and relationships. Now, why is this? Well, just think about it. I mean, if you grew up and you knew that you were really, really good looking since you were a kid, maybe you got some good genetics, or maybe people were just telling you and lavishing you with attention and praise and compliments, and you always thought of yourself as like this beautiful person, really good looking in the top 10% of everybody else around you, so you thought that you were kind of the shit. Well, if you grew up like that, and you grew up that way through early schooling, and then through high school, and then like through college, think about how much more confidence you would have. It would be like this snowball effect that just built up. And then, of course, you would feel more confident, and you would go out and you start approaching girls, you start dating, and that confidence would actually become a self-fulfilling prophecy. Because you think that you're good looking, people are gonna register that from you because you really believe it. It's not so important that you actually are good looking. It's simply important for you because it's kind of like a, a trick that your mind is playing on itself. If you could get that kind of belief in yourself when you were bad looking, you would still be able to get really, really good results with women if you're a guy. But most guys can't generate that kind of confidence because they're kind of broken inside if they've always felt like they're inferior. Now, the same thing with women. Usually, women that are really, really gorgeous, like hot women, um, I mean, you'll see them at clubs, you'll see them at bars, you can go talk with them, and what you realize is that the reason that they have so much confidence is because, again, they have those good looks. It's easier to have that confidence when you are good looking. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't be confident if you're not quite as good looking, if you're kind of average or even below average. It's just that it'll take you more work because your mind is going to be hooked on the external stimulus that you're getting. What the, envir what the environment is going to be feeding you, for example, if you're in American culture, you're going to be fed by all these images. Magazine covers of beautiful people, TV shows with beautiful people, actors, movies, celebrities, people talking about it, also the dating experiences that you hear about from your friends. So all of this stuff is going to be bombarding you. And if you've got a, a weak mind, especially when you're growing up, you have a weak mind, you haven't really strengthened it, you don't have much self-control, then you're going to be buying into that. You're going to just be absorbing that like a sponge. And that's a dangerous thing because, uh, because that means you're just accepting what the surroundings are telling you. See, it takes a strong mind to go against the surroundings. When people are telling you that you're ugly or you're looking funny or something like that, imagine how confident you'd have to be to take those and not really care, to just kind of shrug them off. Some people are actually will, able to do that and uh, that shows that they have like real confidence and it might even be true that they're ugly and someone tells them that they're ugly and they just don't care. How cool would it be to get to that level? Uh, that level is definitely possible. You have to work at it though and you have to start unhooking yourself from all the external inputs that you're getting from society and media and all your friends and even your own mind is tricking you into believing this stuff. So confidence is really about the, the mental game the mental aspects of what you think about yourself. It's really about your self-image, right? It's who you believe that you are. I have another video on self-image. I'll link it down below. You can check it out. But self-image is very important because it determines, subconsciously, it determines what you think you can do in the world, who you think you are, how you think the world works, how you feel about yourself. These are really deep subconscious beliefs that you have. And what's nice about this, even though it can be difficult to change, what's nice is that the self-image can be totally changed. And that the self-image is rather arbitrary. This is just stuff that is accumulated from your childhood and your past experiences. And now it's in there, but you can go and you can use various techniques to work this stuff out. So con context dependence of confidence. Let's talk about that for a second. I want you to find a couple of things that you're really, really confident in in your life. I want you to prove this to yourself. Everyone can find at least a couple of things that they're good at that they are totally confident they can do. And then I want you to write those down, and then I want you to find a couple of other things 
where you're not confident. So this should be even easier because that's why you're watching this video because you already have a couple of those on top of your mind, but write those down as well. I want you to compare those side by side and just see what is the difference? Why are you not confident in a couple of areas and then confident in some of the others? What you're gonna discover is some of the stuff that I'm telling you is because of the early experiences that you've had through childhood, maybe traumatic events that have caused you to feel insecure about yourself, or it's the experience that you have, right? The reason you're confident in some of the other stuff is just because you've really worked on it really, really hard and you feel like it's part of you, part of your self-image. When you feel like, yeah, you know what, that's me. That's true, that's me, like I'm a math person. I'm really good with words. I'm really good with people. Whenever you feel like it's really you, that's the self-image talking. So that's where you wanna to get to when you get confident at something. Okay, so the two avenues for building confidence are gonna be confidence through competence, right? Become competent at the thing that you're trying to do. So this means taking action and committing yourself to a path of mastery. You have to master the thing that you want. So if you're looking at this video and you're asking yourself, well, how can I become confident in this one area that I have a trouble in? Here's the answer. One answer is to take a lot of action, build a lot of competence, fail a lot, learn your mistakes, take the hard knocks, and then you're gonna be confident. That's how everyone really builds confidence, is through that process. It's just that you don't see it in others because that process is usually hidden and it's internal. And the second way to build confidence is through sheer will. It's the inner game, right? I like to say that there's like the external component and the internal component. The external component of confidence is going out there and building mastery through action. The internal component is by building up your mindsets. That's all the videos that I'm sharing with you, understanding yourself, understanding your psychology, mastering that, practicing various techniques like affirmations, visualizations, meditation, journaling, getting coaching on whatever area that you're having trouble with. And I mean the psychology of it not the practice of it, the psychology, right? So it's one thing to go and work on your public speaking skills to actually become a, an articulate public speaker. That is gonna build your external mastery and it's gonna build competence, which will lead to confidence. But that alone won't be enough. You also need to master the inner psychology of it. How are you thinking about your public speaking? How are you thinking about yourself? Do you believe that you're a naturally gifted public speaker? Can you program that into your mind? What about your subconscious mind? What kind of limiting beliefs there are holding you back? So all that stuff you have to work on. And really, if you wanna work on that stuff, then that's what this channel is about. That's why I encourage you to subscribe and watch more videos because that's what I'm really excited about is showing you how to do the inner work. Because the outer work, uh, that's a little bit more obvious about how to do that. And that's gonna be very specific to what you're trying to master. Okay, so this is it. This is really what self-confidence is about. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding and you can go out there and start to build self-confidence in whatever area of life that you need it in the most right now. This is Leo, I'm signing off. Go ahead, post me your comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Please like this and share it. Click the like button right now. Throw it up on Facebook so your friends could see. That would be a huge favor to me. And then of course, if you're interested in this stuff, then I really encourage you to come and check out and subscribe to my newsletter right here at actualize.org. It's a free newsletter. I'm releasing updates, exclusive content, videos, articles, other goodies. I have a lot of exciting stuff that's planned that I'm gonna be releasing over the next year or so. So come and sign up for that because really what I'm doing is I'm trying to get you a really solid understanding of who you are, how you function, so you could create a really passionate, exciting life for yourself. Everything that you want in your life, I want you to take that to the nth degree. I want you to be really excited about what you're doing with your career, with your relationships, with everything. And I want you to be really happy and satisfied, not just getting the externals, but also just being fulfilled on the inside. And to do that, you have to master yourself. And that's what I'm really passionate about helping you to do. So if you sign up, then you're gonna be staying on board with all the updates that I'm releasing. And this is a process that is a process. You need constant updates so that you're growing yourself on a daily and weekly basis. That's what I found really works the best. That's what I use on myself. That's what I use with my clients. And that's what I wanna help you do for free. So sign up.